welcome, welcome, hello, hello, and hello, and welcome to story time. That's right, it's story time at the Rockbridge Regional Library. My name is Miss Wendy, and I'm so glad you could join me here today. Today is Cinco de Mayo, so we're going to learn a little bit about that today. But before we get started, let's do our hello song. Okay, so here's how it goes. First, we'll say hello, and then we'll say friends. Now, friends are your two first fingers, and they give each other a hug, like that. And then it's time, my watch, to say hello. Okay, we'll do it twice. Here we go. Uno, dos, tres. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello again. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Well, hello, my friends. I hope you have had a very nice couple of weeks and I'm excited to get started. So today is Cinco de Mayo, which is a celebration of Mexican heritage and pride. And so I thought it would be fun to read some books today that kind of have a bit of Spanish in it. And if you noticed at the beginning of the hello song, instead of saying one, two, three, I said uno, dos, tres. And that's one, two, three in Spanish. So we'll talk about some Spanish numbers a little bit later. But first, I have to ask you some questions about what day of the week it is. So let me pull my days of the week. Let's go over it and see what day today is. Okay, first, let's count. How many days of the week do we have? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's right. Seven days of the week. Now let's see if we can read them. Sunday. Let me bring it closer. Sunday. Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. And Saturday. That's right. Excellent. Okay, so now let's sing our Days of the Week song. So remember, there's seven days. So let's put our seven fingers up for our seven days. And here's how it goes. Every week has seven days. See how many you can say. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday. What is today? Well, it's story time. When do we do story time? We do story time in the middle of the week and it starts with the letter W. Wednesday, that's right, it's Wednesday, middle of the week. Okay, let's do it one more time. Every week has seven days. See how many you can say. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. What is today? Wednesday! Excellent, wonderful Wednesday. So, that leaves only one thing. Are you ready for a story? Okay, let me get my ukulele. All right. Okay, so we will start with, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. Okay, one, two, three. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. It's been a little while since I've done that, so now <laughs> I messed up a little bit, but that's okay. Now next one, let's do, we want to move around a little bit, get some energy out before we sit down to read. 
So I say, let's jump. Okay. If only if you're ready for a story though. <laughs> okay. If you're ready for a story, jump up and down. If you're ready for a story, jump up and down. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, jump up and down. Yay! Okay, let's see. How can we get some wiggles out before we read? How about we get some wiggles out before we read? If you're ready for a story, do a wiggle. If you're ready for a story, do a wiggle. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, give me a wiggle. Excellent! Okay, do you feel like you got your wiggles out enough to sit for a book? All right, well then in that case, if you're ready for a story, sit real still. If you're ready for a story, sit real still. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, sit real still. How long can you hold it? Freeze like a statue. Okay, okay, that's all I can do. I can only freeze for so long. All right. One last thing before we read <clears throat> is we're going to take five deep breaths. And the reason we do that is because it helps us, our bodies to calm down. It brings oxygen into our bodies and it helps us be ready to read. Okay, so I put my first finger and my thumb together and I take a deep breath in. Hold it and out. Middle finger and thumb, deep breath in, deep breath out. Ring finger, third finger and thumb, deep breath in, deep breath out. Pinky and thumb, deep breath in, deep breath out. And finally, thumbs, deep breath in, deep breath out, because you're feeling good. All right, let's read. Okay, let's see what we have first. Okay, but before we go over there, let's look and see if we can find Mexico on the map on the globe, excuse me. So here's North America, and here's the United States, and here's Virginia, and here is Mexico. So Cinco de Mayo, again, is a celebration of Mexican heritage and pride. And this, something I found out that I didn't know before, is that in Mexico, there's also a tooth fairy. Except it's not called a tooth fairy. It's a little mouse, and he's called El Raton Perez. And he comes in the middle of the night when there's a tooth under your pillow and replaces it with something special. All right, let's find out what happens when the tooth fairy meets El Raton Perez. And this is by Rene Calado Lainez and illustrated by Tom Lintern. This is exciting. And this comes to us from Tricycle Press. Okay. Miguelito wriggled and jiggled his loose tooth until one night it fell out. Yay, mi dente, my tooth, he said, and put it under his pillow. Soon Miguelito fell asleep. Far away in her castle, the Tooth Fairy read fan letters, counted coins, and searched for addresses. When she saw a star begin to twinkle in the sky, she rushed for her magic wand. Fantastic! The signal, she said. A new tooth! All right. Meanwhile, in his cave, El Raton Perez rolled out his maps, practiced his lasso and worked on his rocket ship. He looked at the moon and licked his whiskers. Then he saw the moonbeam. Finally a signal, he said. A new diente. Which is tooth. Tap, 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 clap. 
Here is my tooth. Creep, 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 sweep, leap. Aquí está mi dente. Uh-oh, they both arrived. <gasps> Eek! A mouse! Gua una señorita bonita! Who are you? the tooth fairy asked. I am El Raton Perez, he said, bowing. I collect lost teeth from niños around the world. The Tooth Fairy smiled, shaking her wand. I am the Tooth Fairy, and here in the United States, I collect children's teeth. She tugged at the tooth. No, 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 El Raton Perez, said El Raton Perez, tugging back. This is Megalito's house, and I collected his papa's, mama's, and his abuelito's teeth. Megalito's tooth is mine. The tooth fairy grabbed the tooth from the side from one side. El Raton Perez grabbed it from the other. They pulled and pushed and pushed and pulled. Es mio, it's mine. <gasps> there goes the tooth. Stop showing your whisk shoving your whiskers in my face. Don't poke my nose with that fancy stick. Whoosh! The tooth flew through the air. Oh no! The tooth! Ay, caramba! El diente! The tooth fairy flew to the closet. Where is my tooth? She hopped from hanger to hanger, lighting the way with her magic wand. El Raton rushed to the floor below the dresser. He searched, sniffing from shoe to shoe. Donde esta mi diente? Suddenly, they saw something sparkling high in the bookshelf. El Raton Perez jumped and pointed. Mi diente is up there. I will get it. He launched his lasso out to the shelf, but the rope was too short. He tried again and again, but it was no use. Ay, caramba, I cannot reach mi diente, El Raton Perez said. The tooth will be mine, cheered, cheered the tooth fairy. She flew to the shelf and tried to push the books aside, but the books were too heavy. This space is too narrow for me. I will never reach my tooth, she said, flying back down to sit next to El Raton Perez. It's a beautiful tooth, the tooth fairy said with tears rolling down her face. Es un bello diente, El Raton Perez agreed with tears in his whiskers. I can squeeze into small places, but I cannot crawl up that high. Wait a minute, the tooth fairy said. Let's rescue our tooth together. I'll carry you up. See, he said. Yes, I'll crawl between the books. El Raton Perez carefully perched on the tooth fairy's shoulder. Hold on, she cried. They flew up the shelf together. I see our diente, said El Raton Perez. He helped the tooth fairy push aside the books, then squeezed in and triumphantly pulled out the tooth. Hooray, said the tooth fairy. Si viva, viva, cheered El Raton Perez. Let's share El Diente, said El Raton Perez. I am using mis dientes to build a rocket ship so I can visit the moon made of cheese. You can come with me. And after our trip, I can use the teeth from the rocket ship to build a sparkling castle, said the tooth fairy. Yes, they shouted, dancing around the tooth. Oh, look at that, they work together. The following morning, Megalito found two shiny coins under his pillow with a note that said, from your amigos forever. The Tooth Fairy and El Raton Perez. Right, that worked out pretty well for Miguelito, for sure. That is fun. What do you think? Do you think El Raton Perez is going to visit you next time you lose a tooth? Maybe. Maybe you should. <laughs> well, definitely check under your pillow to find out. Excellent, my friends. Mi amigos. Okay, so let's sing a song. We've read a book. So now let's move around a little. And I brought an instrument. This is a maraca. 
And you know what it reminds me of? Our egg shakers. Look at the pretty artwork on it. So, let's sing our egg shaker song. And if you don't have a maraca at home, you can get an egg shaker. If you don't have an egg shaker, you could get a box of rice or pasta. That always works. Make sure it's closed, whatever you do, before you fling pasta everywhere. And so, do you remember this song, Egg Shakers Up? So we'll do our egg shakers up high, and then we'll do them down low, and then we'll do, well, you just follow along, okay? Give you a second to get your egg shakers or your maracas. Okay, here we go. Uno, dos, tres. Egg shakers up, egg shakers down, egg shakers dancing. All around the town, we dance them on our shoulders, we dance them on our heads, we dance them on our knees, and we tuck them into bed. Very good. We haven't done that song in a while. Let's do it again very fast, okay? You guys ready? We're going to go super fast with this one. Make sure you're ready, okay? One. Uno, dos, tres, egg shakers up, egg shakers down, egg shakers dancing, all around the town, get them on our shoulders, get them on our heads, get them on our knees, and we tuck them into bed. <laughs> Asleep. Okay. Let's do it one more time. But this time, let's do it very, very slow. Okay. Here's our beat. This might take a long time. Egg shakers up. Egg shakers down, egg shakers dancing, all around the town, we dance them on our shoulders, dance them on our heads, we dance them on our knees, and tuck them into bed. All right, excellent, okay. Are we ready for another book? I think we are. This one is really cool. Okay. This one is about counting to 10 in Spanish. And this book has, is called One is a Piñata. Do you know what a piñata is? You may have used a piñata at a birthday when you hit it with a stick and a bunch of candy falls out which is super exciting. So let's see. One is a piñata. Let's. This is going to help us go over what the Spanish words are for one through ten. And this is by Roseanne Greenfield Thong and illustrated by John Para. And this comes to us from Chronicle Books. There's the number one. One. Uno. One is a rainbow. One is a cake. One is a piñata that's ready to break. Okay, there's number two. Two. Dos. Two maracas. We shake to the beat. Two are zapatos on my feet. Zapatos are shoes. He's got two as well. Dos, zapatos. Two are the goalies. Two are the teams. Two are sonrisas and cold ice creams. Okay, now here's the number three, or trace. Three are burbujas that slide and wiggle and pop, and then the giggles. Burbujas are bubbles. Four, or cuatro. Four bolillos just waiting for to dip in four cups of chocolate. But first, take a sip. Bolillos are nice, warm bread. 
One, one. Oops, I forgot that one. One, two, three, and four. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Five cometas that fly, dip and fly. Five are the nubes that float through the sky. Now, cometas are the kites and nubes are the clouds. Let's see if there's actually five. One, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Five. Excellent. Five beach palapas. Five boats in the bay. Five hammocks swinging on one lazy day. Now palapas are these nice shaded areas that you can sit under when you're on the beach. Now let's count them. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cinco. That's five. Six kinds of salsa to pour on rice. Six rosy faces from all the spice. Six flavored aguas to quench our thirst. Try the horchata or piña first. Six. Seis. Let's see, is there, is there seis? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Excellent. <gasps> yes, seven marigolds to lead the way. Seven cavaleras to put on display. There are the cavaleras. And seven, siete. Now let's see if there's seven. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Seven. Eight are the frutas we eat on a stick. With chili and lime juice, come take your pick. Eight, ocho. Okay, let's see. Is there eight pieces of fruit? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho. Eight pieces of fruit. That looks delicious. Nine, nueve. Nine paraguas are puddles for splashing. Nine slick raincoats for those who love dashing. Paraguas. Umbrellas. Let's count them. Uno. Dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, nine. All right. Ten. Ten glowing velas, ten banners bright, ten foroles that guide us by candlelight. Now let's count the candles. Uno, dos, Tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. We did it. We counted to ten in Spanish. Ten are my friends who join the fiesta, which is party. Ten are the yawns before our siesta. Ah, siesta. That means to take some time to rest. Now let's see if we can do it together. <clears throat> there are so many numbers that we love to contar, which is count, from uno to diez. Can you count that far? All right, let's try it. And look, each of them have the number of fingers pointed up. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, Nueve, diez. Very good, you did it. Fabulous. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that book. And if you check this book out, it has pronunciations and also definitions of the Spanish words that are in this book. Let's go back to this dipping bread in chocolate. That sounds like a very, very good idea. I think that I think that's a great idea. <laughs> okay, so now that we have reviewed our... Spanish numbers. 
Let's see if I can get out of the shadow. Let's see if we can count them on our own. Now I'm gonna let me figure out where I'm gonna be. Okay. First, let's count them in English. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, now I'm gonna, let's try it in, in Spanish. And we'll put a little bit of a, a rhythm to it so that it will help us to remember. And we'll build up and then back down. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. All right, let's do it again. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Very good. Well, I hope that you guys, at least let's work on uno, dos, tres, one, two, and three. And we'll try to remember those for next time. Okay, so this next book, this final book, I could not resist because for me, when Cinco de Mayo rolls around, it means go buy yourself a bunch of avocados <laughs> and make some wonderful guacamole and just, I know that I just love an avocado and any excuse to eat a bunch of it is, is a good idea. <laughs> and this is a wonderful book because you know what? I had this question too. Avocado asks, what am I? You know what? That's a good question. What is an avocado? Is it a fruit? Is it a vegetable? Hmm. Maybe this book will get to the bottom of it. And this is this is written and illustrated by Momoko Abe. Okay. Let's see if we can find out. Avocado asks, "What am I?" <laughs> This one comes to us from Doubleday Books for Young Readers. What am I? Ooh, that's unfortunate. I'm gonna do this. Okay. Wow, that was, I'm very sorry about that. I forgot to turn my phone off. I'm glad we were just beginning this book. Avocado asks, what am I? Avocado is feeling just fine in the fruit and vegetable side of the supermarket. Life was pretty simple. No doubts, no questions, no confusion. Until one day, a small customer pointed and asked, is an avocado a fruit or a vegetable? Hmm, I'm not sure, sweetie. When we get home, we'll look it up. Suddenly, Avocado's world was turned upside down. Fruit or vegetable? Avocado didn't know the answer either. So, Avocado asked the vegetables, Am I a vegetable? The vegetables seemed to be confused at first. But then the cabbages said, you're not leafy like us. And you're not crunchy like us, the carrots cut in. And vegetables don't have a big pit in the middle like you do, grumbled the potatoes. You're not a vegetable. Then I must be a fruit, thought Avocado. So Avocado asked the fruits, am I a fruit? You're not sweet and juicy like us, said the pears. No one would eat you for dessert, giggled the bananas. You belong in a salad, but not in a fruit salad, said the peaches. You're not a fruit. Avocado's insides felt like they were turning into guacamole. I don't belong with the vegetables or the fruit. There must be somewhere I can feel at home. But 
Where? He's looking all over the grocery store. Where does this avocado belong? I'm pretty sure I'm not an herb or a sausage. I know I'm not a canned pea or a bean. Avocado came to the fish counter. With their fins and scales, the fish looked very different, but it was worth a try. There he is. Am I a fish? Don't be silly. Avocado can't swim, said the fish coldly. You're not a fish. But what about the cheese? Some of them are round like avocado. Some of them are hard, have hard skin on the outside, too. You're not a cheese. They smell a lot like feet, thought the avocado. I'm pretty glad I'm not cheese. Maybe I'm a... Nope. <laughs> Where are those? Eggs. He almost spit. Avocado was more confused than ever. I'm not a fruit. I'm a vegetable, a fish, a cheese, or an egg. Far from the fruit and vegetable section, Avocado was feeling lost and lonely. And that was when Avocado heard, oh, what do you think is going to happen? Hey! Cheer up, amigo, said Tomato. You don't know what you are, so what? Don't stew in your own juices. I'm a fruit, but no one believes me. And I don't care. Because I'm tasty, hot or cold. I make splendid salads and superb soup. People love me on pizza and adore me with pasta. And they can't get enough of my ketchup. And you, Avocado, you are the star of any salad and terrific on toast and tremendous in tacos. You're scrumptious in sushi. Your and your guacamole is so delicious that the other fruits and vegetables go green with envy. Hmm. He's got a little, he's got a point. Who cares what we are when we're simply amazing, said Tomato. It was true. They could just be themselves, and that was enough. Suddenly, Avocado didn't feel lost and lonely anymore. And that was when he heard, Excuse me? <gasps> what are we? Fruit or nut? Am I a weed? Am I a spice? Fruit or vegetable? Spoon or spork? <laughs> Spoon or fork, excuse me. Fruit? Fungus? <laughs> the end. Turns out they're not the only ones who are a little bit confused about who they are. <laughs> All right, my friends. Well, I hope you... Who cares what we are when we're simply amazing? That's it. Those are good words to live by. Okay, so I hope that you have enjoyed this story time. I know I have enjoyed being with you. And I hope you go out today and enjoy Cinco de Mayo. Don't forget, try to remember how to count to three in Spanish. Uno, dos, tres. And if your parents want you to eat avocado tonight, do it. <laughs> All right, my friends, tomorrow at 1030, we will have another baby and toddler story time. And also, big news, please drop by the library on Saturday, this Saturday, between 11 and 2 p.m. We're going to have a pop-up art day out there where we're going to paint these beautiful paper feathers for a mural inside the library. And I would love to see you. I will be there helping everybody learn how to do gradient painting on paper. And it should be a lot of fun. That's 11 to 2 here at the Rockbridge Regional Library in Lexington. 
one to, or sorry, 11 to 2 this coming Saturday. And all the supplies will be there. And I hope to see you. And so, but until then, we have to wash our hands, okay? Let's keep washing those hands, okay? So tops and bottoms. Here we go. Uno, dos, tres. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms. In between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together. Now they're clean, squeaky clean. Again, tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms. In between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together. Now they're clean, squeaky clean. So until next time, my friends, I shall see you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug. Blow a kiss, jellyfish. See ya soon, big baboon. Out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear. Wave goodbye, butterfly. Goodbye, my story time friends. See you next time.